insect disease. Do you get them? Do you freak out? Do you respond? Do you intervene? How do you intervene? Should you intervene? All questions I want to look at today. Stay tuned. I've had a lot of seasons, the last 30 years with fruit trees specifically, and I've seen terrible years and I've seen wonderful years. I've seen years where I didn't have to do anything and I got great results. And I had years where even if I intervened, I still had problems. Seasons do play an important role. Maybe it's a wet year. Maybe it's a dry year like we're having this year. Maybe last year was perfect for the plants and this year isn't perfect. Insects and disease have ups and downs. They have years where they're everywhere and years where you can't even find them. When you do get insects, how do you respond? Do you head right away? Oh, ha, ah, I, uh, let's see if I could see something. Yeah, here I have a little, a little plum that's had a bite. Wow, what do I do? And I've heard of people go, oh, look, they send me pictures and they say, look, I have, my leaves are partly eaten. Relax. First thing, please relax. It is normal, even for an insect on a tree that is perfectly immune to sample, to just taste a leaf. So that's not unusual to get some sampling. There's a difference between sampling and defoliating. There's a difference between having an apple or a fruit that's got a, a spot or a peck. That happens. It's not normal for every fruit to be absolutely destroyed. So please, first of all, realize, is it actually a problem or is it just you're looking so closely that you're finding any little thing? Oh, look. I did find something. Here's some black knot. For black knot, I just remove the branch and I take it off. Do I have to spray against it? I can and I do. I spray away. Go see that video. For diseases, that's a wonderful product. Your first reaction should be, how bad is it? Is it really serious? Is it to the point where I need to intervene? And if I do need to intervene, how do I need to intervene? That's always the question. There are problems that have completely disappeared in my orchard because I stopped treating with fungicides. I never treated, but the previous owner had. And because I stopped treating with fungicides, I'd like to show you, but sorry, I thought I could find the canker that I'd seen. One canker in the orchard. When it's gone, it's gone. Canker as soon as I stopped killing all the fungus just disappeared. Why? Because there are fungus that eat fungus. It's something that if you stop killing the fungus or the mushrooms or the beneficial mushrooms, they will take care of that problem all on its own. Imagine you stop and you get less of what you treated. Does that make sense? Yes, it does make sense because nature has a diversity and there are diseases that disappear because there are good diseases if you want to look at it that way. Some problems disappear if you make changes. Well, these are more major changes. It's the choice of which plants you're going to grow. So here's an old tree from the existing orchard. And this is a Spartan apple. It is mildly susceptible to apple scab. The most common disease in Eastern North America for apple trees. And scab will make these spots on the leaves and then on the fruit. What did I do? I replanted the orchard with many, many more scab resistant cultivars. Types of trees that, eh, you know, they're just, they're resistant. If they're resistant, they're resistant. This one isn't. It's not totally, some of them are really susceptible and most of those actually died out because I didn't want a treat to protect the tree from every little disease. And so, hey, they shouldn't have been here in the first place, so they disappeared. You think that's pretty drastic, but that's a way of having a much simpler, much easier orchard. I even have an, a little apple that's been girdled by something, and that's okay too. You know why? Because 
there's going to be so many apples on here that it needs to thin out and insects do some of that thinning so you think ah listen don't get caught in a treadmill of treating for every insect and then having to thin because the insects didn't thin for you hmm let's see the insects will thin the fruit so you don't have to thin instead if you spray and you kill all the insects you have to thin seems like a make work project to me so we saw there's problems that disappear when you stop treating there's other problems that disappear when you change the type of plant you grow the cultivar but there is a third one that problems disappear when you redesign the whole setup for example this used to be a monoculture orchard and the worst pest we had were tent caterpillars well we redid it and put in a whole new way so this is an apple tree this is a pear tree why would you put apple and pear well because we redesigned it into trios and we even added things that aren't fruit trees as part of a trio so fruit fruit in this case a nitrogen fixing tree redesigning it completely solved the tent caterpillar problem so going from the what was the worst problem to what is now fun to see because I like to see them I like to know that we still have some tent caterpillars but they're not a problem and that makes a big difference is it a problem or is it just present I want to have all the pests and all the disease in the orchard I just don't want them to be at a level that is a problem I want to keep a minimum amount to feed all the predators there's birds that need to eat caterpillars there's wasps that are looking for caterpillars and other insects so having that minimum level is just part of having a good ecosystem one with enough food to feed everybody it's not long after bloom this is the peak time for especially insects but also disease to be manifest for apples for example we have three insects that really cause us problems codling moth and got a video for that apple maggot flies which we have a upcoming video for that stay tuned and plum curculio which I haven't figured out a good solution for we trap for these two codling moth and apple maggot fly and maybe we'll trap one day for plum curculio the ultimate of all is to have your plants your trees your shrubs your perennial plants your vegetables that they are so healthy that they are immune know that that exists that's a possibility you've probably experienced it at least with some plant and years ago Dr. Carrie Reams came out with a way of measuring how likely your plant is to be immune he called it the bricks chart it's taking a little bit of a leaf I'll have to do a video on exactly how to do it and getting a drop of juice and finding what is the bricks or the sugar level in the leaves and he found that every plant every crop has a level at which when that is reached that plant becomes immune it has such a healthy functioning immune system that it repels insects and disease on its own that's what you want to get to and the best way to provide that is naturally the way nature always did it which is decomposing rocks and giving those minerals to the plant how do you respond when you get a branch and leaves really eaten up like this what do you do maybe you say well it's simple I just go to the store and I put whatever they tell me to put to get rid of the insects and hey that's a way of doing it it is one way there is always a why finding the why can be a challenge but it's usually the conditions sun water too much water have you ever dug down have you ever checked how far the water is how far to the water table most fruit trees need four feet of clear no water they don't like to have their roots drowned and it could be the choice of cultivar for your soil might not be right or it could be something like are you planting the same thing as a monoculture that will bring its own problems on its own you hear that bird well you may not have many birds having a lot of birds and insects as predators to the pests 
can be a great solution. Maybe you left all the fruit on the ground below the tree and anyone that had an insect is just going to go into the ground. This year has come up and has got the tree right there to reinfect with the insects. But hopefully, hopefully you'll learn to ask why before going ahead and destroying the teacher. Listen to them. They're trying to tell you the answer. Intrigued? Check out the virtual tour of the permaculture orchard. Have trees already? Pruningcourse.com. Subscribe, please. Check out some of the other videos or playlists. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Bye. Go see my, I should, you should do this last year. No, what's the title?